Folks, we are looking at a beautiful Kubota L3560 limited edition. All right, this bad boy has 20 hours on it. I'm trying to keep the hours down. I want to use this machine a lot. I also don't want to get it dirty. Maybe we'll let the next owner get it dirty. But uh, this is this is undoubtedly one of my best barn finds ever. Got to clarify though, I did a short on this. It was sold to me as a 2014 with 20 hours on it. And turns out we ran it through the serial number system and everything. It's a 2019. Sold at the very end, uh, December 30th, 2019. So the warranty date goes off of when it sold. Uh, so good news, it's five years newer than what I was told and it's got some powertrain warranty left on it. So uh, big bonus there for whoever gonna buy this, but let's take you through it. And again, buy it before I change my mind because every time I look at it, I think I wanna keep it. So we'll start up front, go through over the highlights. So I'm gonna have 72 inch bucket on here. They did weld some hooks, one on either end. I do like the Kubota bucket design. Unlike the John Deere, this has like the rolled back, squared off. Uh, it kind of gives it some more durability and reinforcement that way all the way across and nice beefy back brace on here too where the SSQA hooks up. You can see the side, it is a little bit thicker as well. You can see on the inside here how it, it thickens up on that side plate, gives it more durability and rigidity uh, with the strapping and then down towards the bottom is really where it's getting beefed up. This bucket, I don't know why they don't pre-drill these uh, for a cutting edge on there. Now you could put a, a heavy hitch tooth bar on here if you wanted to and you didn't want to have to drill out everything. Otherwise, you drill out maybe, I don't know, eight, 10 holes in here and you can get a, a bolt-on tooth bar there as well. Oh shoot, didn't even notice the chain hook there welded on right in the top, top middle. One of the very, very, very unique things about this tractor, only the second time I've seen it, is going to be the hydraulic skid steer quick attach all right normally you'd have to pull these levers up manually now you can do it without even getting off the operator seat going to hydraulically do it like a skid steer would do all right so that's a super expensive upgrade super nice to have upgrade that you'd be one of the only guys to ever have that uh, moving on more on the rest of the loader you're going to have um, a a third function mounted right here in the center. And again, I like to point this out. If you're shopping for used tractors, look for a circuit like this mounted somewhere in this area. That's gonna be an indication that you've got hoses that you can plug into with hydraulic fluid in line to, to control opening and closing a grapple, angling a hydraulic plow blade, whatever you wanna do up there. So you have two extra functions running up. Chris, come on over here. And so because of that, you're gonna have additional hydraulic hoses and connections over here. So this is a quick park loader. It's got a quick park stand and you can take this whole loader off if you want to. Most don't, but you have the option. You would have traditionally just the four hoses here, which would be the four hoses that are gonna control raising and lowering and then curling and rolling your bucket. Uh, these extra hoses are gonna be for that hydraulic quick coupler and then for the third function that's mounted up there too. So our four tires all around on this. And if you take a close look, I mean, it's so new. The nubs are still on all the tires, all right? I mean, look all the way around, they're on there. And I think, where's that at? See if we can find it here. Yeah, Chris, come over here and show them. There's still actually some of the sticker. Come on this way and look, still little bits of the sticker. They were cleaning the tractor off of the shop and I was like, no, leave those stickers on there. I wanna show them. That's just crazy that there's still stickers on there. That's how, that's how new this tractor is. It's unbelievable. And then it does have a triple stack of wheel weights on the back, all right? These are cast iron weights. I don't know what weight they are. There's nothing nothing stamped on there or imprinted anywhere that I can find. And I don't know why there's a dingy color of orange either. Maybe the weights were sitting around for a long time at the dealer before they uh, sold them. I'm not sure, but easily painted there. Okay, uh, one thing it is missing, but we're gonna have these added on. We just ordered them actually are gonna be the mirrors, one for either side. And then there's an antenna that gets mounted on the far side over there. Uh, not on here now, but that will be. So there's front and rear work lights on the cab. This is a, a fully HVAC cab, all right? It's built right in at the factory. So it's one of the nicest cabs that's on the market. I'd put it up against anything else out there. Super comfortable, about as quiet as you're gonna get uh, in a cab, but if you can afford the premium that a cab tax onto the purchase price, you will appreciate this. So uh, metal hood on here too. So one of the reasons I don't get a lot of Kubotas is because they fade really badly and unevenly. You can see a little bit of fade on this bucket here. If you step back, Chris, and, and show them, look at the, the, the orange on the loader and then look at the orange on the bucket. So I think that bucket did sit outside and, and it's, it doesn't look bad, but it's got a little bit of 
just a little bit of fade on it. Uh, whereas everything else looks really nice and, and bright and glossy. But all these panels, the wheels, the cylinders, they'll all fade at a different rate. Kubota is just known to do that for some reason. So do your tractor a favor, store it inside, keep it waxed, all that kind of stuff just to prevent that from happening. This guy here though, amazing condition. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. It is a 37 horsepower nominal, but they say a 35 horsepower net and I, believe that is where you get the 35 from and the L3560 60 is the series. So you'd have like the L3560, L40, L54, L6060 and all that. So like the older version would be like uh, the L3540, for example, okay? So anyway, that's a little bit of that nomenclature. On the loader, you're gonna have two loader options on this series, an LA555 and then the LA805. The LA805 is the bigger number, it's gonna have greater lift capacity, greater lift height. And so this doesn't quite go to nine foot. I think it's eight foot um, seven or eight foot eight, something like that. And it'll lift about 1700 pounds to full height, but that is at the pin, okay? When you look up these specs, it's very confusing, I guess, okay? And in, in, in some ways unrealistic. Now you're not gonna lift 1700 pounds on a load that's way out here on pallet forks to full height, all right? You're gonna lift 1,700 pounds if you have it at the pins, which I consider these pins where it's where it's loaded at, or maybe these are pins. But right back here, they're just maxing it out at the most ideal, unrealistic way that nobody can put a load up there. But that's where they're gonna rate that at. So the further away you go from the base of your loader, the less weight you're gonna lift up. So that's realistic. That's why I like to say you want to have a lot of margin in whatever it is you're going to be doing. So pick your heaviest task. And I always use a, a round bale, like an 800 pound round bale as an example. Some specs will say the 1025R can lift up 796 pounds or something, you know? And while you can tweak hydraulics and everything else and maybe make it happen, that's just a bad idea to try to make that work. Get something that's gonna lift 25% more, 30% more than 800 pounds. That way you don't feel like you're on the borderline every time you're trying to do that heavy task. If it's just something on the rare occasion or rare exception, maybe you can get away with it. But if it's a regular task that you're looking to do, make sure you give yourself plenty of margin. You're gonna be so happy you did in the long run. Now this tractor weighs about 3,900 pounds. Believe they give the weight without the loader. So this is probably another 800-ish, maybe 900 pounds on top of that. So it's a heavy, beefy tractor. You add on wheel weights, that's a, you know, a few hundred pounds more. You load the tires, you get a rear attachment. You're, you you got to have a pretty good sized trailer to haul this around. A 10,000 pound tandem axle uh, GVWR, you know, if you take off 3,000 pounds, you know, something like that, will still leave you 6,500, 7,000 pounds of hauling capacity, which would be a good fit. Uh, trailer length is going to come into play as well. By the time you had a brush hog on here, maybe an extra attachment after that, you're eating up all of 20 foot and then more than that too. So. So keep that in mind. The width isn't going to be an issue. A standard seven foot trailer will, will carry this along just fine. I don't think there's anything else that's critical. It is a Kubota three cylinder diesel engine in there. Glow plugs are standard. Beyond that though, there's, those are kind of the highlights. That's what you need to know. Uh, more lift capacity on the three point than you would ever know what to do with. It'll lift whatever you need to. That's not going to be a concern there as well. Just make sure you get up set, set up properly with enough ballast weight on the backside of your tractor. So this will have a rear remote, all right? So this is optional, okay? A rear remote is optional. That front hydraulic uh, third function is optional. Um, the hydraulic quick coupler up front is optional as well. So these are upgrades that add to uh, the price of the tractor. Same thing with the triple stack of wheel waste. These are above and beyond the base price of a tractor when you're gonna be quoted. Um, category one, three point hitch on here, 540 RPM rear PTO. Those are standard for tractors in the compact world. It could be a subcompact, it could be a mid-sized compact like this, or even uh, the big compacts like the L6060, the 4066R, those are all gonna be category one, 540 RPM standard on there. There's no mid PTO on this one, but I do believe that's an option if you wanted to get a front mount snowblower. I believe it's field installable. Double check with your Kubota dealer. 
A uh, couple things I'd like to point out on these, they're gonna have telescoping end links, okay? That's super nice when you're hooking up to three-point attachments, okay? And then these are uh, telescoping draft arms here. Let me take this pin out. And you can see how that slides, and then you can just pin it back in whatever hole you want to. That is something that's super nice. I think every tractor should have those. Unfortunately, they don't, but I think they should. And for those of you that have that feature or some of you that don't, I think you'll validate that statement. Very beefy back end though. If you take a look at it, there's nothing that looks chintzy about this at all. You do see some tractors with real little spindly axle arms coming out left and right there. This, uh, this does not give you that appearance. We're going to do a separate video on what these three holes are all about. You can reference it in the manual, but it's essentially going to be dependent on the type of attachment you're hooking up where you want to mount your top link in the, in the right position or not uh, to control what happens when you raise and lower your attachment. And then I'm going to have a draw bar stand there too. No rear wiper on this, but these holes right here are so that you can add a rear wiper if you want to. This back glass does pop out. Flashers up top, running lights there. Nothing else to really see on the outside. Hop up inside. I'm gonna open this far door to get a little breeze going. So, I think this seat, yeah it is. It's as back as far as it can go. I am gonna round up a hair just to six foot three, but six foot three, 200 pounds for a rough approximation. I've got a little bit of space uh, above my head here. Comfortable armrests on here, both sides I've seen. I've seen better armrests, but these are sufficient. They're gonna be adjustable still. Comfortable seat. I think this is one of those grammar seats. It's not an air ride seat from what I can tell, no, but it's a very comfortable, um, definitely plenty adequate suspension seat. Three range hydrostatic transmission. The cool thing about the Grand L series is not only do you have high, medium, and low, but then you have micro adjustment here, all right? So within each of those ranges, like within low, you can flip this up to go to like fast low, and you can turn it down to the turtle to go to like low low. So you have like six ranges within the three. Um, that's handier than you think. As far as your pedal configuration down here, you got a split brake over on this side. Most folks anymore are, are not gonna have them separated. They're just gonna keep them connected like that, but uh, you can run them independently if you want to. Uh, over down on this side then, you do have a treadle pedal, okay? But this is the vastly improved treadle pedal design that they, for some reason, don't put on all of their machines, just on the Grand L's. This is much more tolerable. Um, it's getting it closer to what a twin touch pedal design would be like. Uh, not exactly like that, but it makes better use of the floor space. I can deal with this design much better than anything else uh, that Kubota offers in the treadle pedal world. Parking brake. Okay, pretty straightforward. This is for tilt, you just push that down with your foot, and then you adjust, you know, you just adjust your steering wheel how you want. Uh, displays, auto throttle, flashers, and regen stuff. Uh, horn, I wonder if the key's gotta be on for the horn. Key has to be on for the horn. Some light controls on the far side here. Um, oh, Chris, show them this little storage cubby, that's nice. Right down here, storage cubby. Yeah, go the other side there. So here's our, our turn signals right here and lights. Okay, turn those on and off. Some more light controls as well. Uh, ignition, nothing else really down there. This is a loader lockout. If you want to lock out the ability um, to move your loader, you can do it with that. This is going to be our, uh, let's see. Well, we're gonna flip the third function on and off of this button, and then we can control uh, with that. You're also gonna have a built-in throttle here where you can actually throttle it up with the loader joystick as well if you need an extra bit of oomph. Um, you do have your regular throttle control right here. Rock shaft control. This is our rear remote control, so that extra remote that was on the back, you, if you have something plugged in, you can move it one way or the other to control that. Yellow button. That's gonna be our PTO, okay? You just push it down and turn it on and then 
tap it again, it'll go back off. Cup holder, these two buttons are actually used, both of these, to unhook and hook back up that hydraulic quick attach between the loader and the bucket. So if you want to take your bucket off and put a set of pallet forks on or a snow pusher or a grapple or whatever else, you use these buttons right there. You have to press one and then the other? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I forget, I just did it. It's either, you, I think you press this one down and then push unlock or lock, if I recall correctly. Oh, and a couple more uh, work light controls right here on this side. Uh, looking up top, this guy has the knockout plate for a radio, but does not have a radio. It's got the speakers in, in uh, already included for it, though you just pop a radio in there and hook it up to the wiring harness. Vent controls all on the top, very, very similar to anything else, a dome light. Uh, HVAC controls and wiper. You do have a rear view mirror in here too, which is a pretty nice touch. I don't think I'm missing anything else, but this window, both the side windows and the back corners open up, the rear window opens up. Yeah, I think that's about it. We've covered it all. Let's uh, pop open the hood. Now this one, there it is. So you gotta take your hood guard down. And then, <clears throat> pop it that way. Here's a look underneath the hood. You have your battery access up front. Pretty easy to get to. I always appreciate when uh, manufacturers do that. Although you hopefully don't have to mess with the battery too often. But again, you know, folks ask, why do you want a quick park loader? when most of you aren't gonna take them off and I'm in the same boat as you guys, but if you have to do extended service on the engine compartment, boy, it sure is nice to get that loader, these arms on both sides out of the way and just have a lot more complete access to the engine if you need it. Pop that back up right there. Now, what I would suggest getting on here is a 511 grill guard Fill this whole gap and you can get wings as well for the other side like we did on Kubota M4. That'll provide a lot of additional um, protection on here. Makes it look pretty sweet too. I just hate to mess this thing up, it's so beautiful. But uh, other than that, 20 hours on it. We include shipping to 36 states right now uh, in our prices. And so this would get delivered on a trailer that has ramps. Most of the time it's gonna be like a hot shot, like a gooseneck flatbed with ramps on there. Sometimes it's like a bigger semi that has pullout ramps. Either way, that is included because we know most of you don't have loading docks where you live. So um, if you want more information, details, pictures of this tractor or anything else that we have for sale, head on over to our website, goodworkstractors.com. We're happy to help you out. And if you're looking for attachments to go along with it too, we have all sorts of attachments for the front end loader and the three point hitch. On that note, I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon. Oh, 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 oh,